Good day to you viewers. I am Julian Ono, a third-year mass communication student from Norso Dumaguete Main Campus. I will be reporting about poverty in the Philippines. Let's begin. First, let's define what poverty is. Poverty, a state or condition in where people or communities cannot meet the minimum standard of living due to lack of resources. In short, it's a state in which people struggle to live a normal daily life. Now, what causes poverty? Poverty is caused by corruption, unemployment, poor healthcare system, and inequality to name a few. With these factors, simply working hard won't be enough to get you out of poverty. You're already struggling to live for yourself with minimum wage, and even struggling more because of these hurdles. It's why when people are given the opportunity for a better life outside of a poverty state, they take it so they can live the best life they can attain. Now, our beloved country, the Philippines. The Philippines, a tropical country located in Southeast Asia, and it is one of the many countries enslaved by poverty for years. The Philippines has been in poverty since the early 1990s and is still continuing to combat it in this very present day. Over 5.6 million Filipinos were living in poverty in 2022 according to the DSWD, while in 2015 it was 5.2 million, so it has increased. It's not hard to guess why there were mo the it has increased to 5.6 million in 2022. That's because the Philippines experienced the COVID-19 pandemic. 27% of Filipinos are poor out of the 111 million total Philippine population, and the Philippines ranks number 84 out of 167 countries in the Legatum Prosperity Index of 2023. Before I move on to the next slide, I'd like to explain what the Legatum Prosperity Index is. So the Legatum Prosperity Index it is a framework that assesses a country's economic and social well-being, which is done annually. It takes into account um, the following such as economic quality, business environment, governance, education, health, and natural environment, to name a few. Now, the Philippines ranks 53rd in economic equality according to the Legatum Prosperity Index of 2023. This means uh, this category, economic equality, refers to fairness among all societies in a country, meaning everyone enjoys the same benefits regardless of their status quo. So it doesn't matter if you're poor, rich, or middle class, everyone gets the same benefits. The Philippines is ranked 53rd, meaning that we are somewhat receiving equal benefits, but still needs more work to be done in order to experience actual economic equality. Next, Philippines ranks 109th in living conditions. Um, this category refers to quality of life in a country, like, for example, how safe is the country? Are the environments clean? Are people's health in a good state? So when we're, we're ranked 109th, and it's not hard to guess why, because the Philippines is still suffering from crime and prejudice. There's drugs, there's the environment, and poor physical and mental health. Now we have the poverty threshold or poverty line. The minimum income required for a family or individual to meet basic needs. And according to the latest data from the Philippine Statistics Authority, which is, was in the year 2021, for the population, an average of 2,406 pesos is needed to meet the basic needs. And for families, an average of 12,030 pesos is needed to meet their basic needs. This also takes into account um, you know, paying bills, minimum wage, and in this present day, in this year, these these amount like two thousand four hundred six twelve thousand. These amount is not enough to last for a month due to increased prices of basic goods and services, especially if you have a large household. Now, before I continue to talk about the graph, I would like to explain first what poverty incidence is. So, according to the Philippine Statistics Authority or the PSA, poverty incidence is the proportion of families or individuals with per capita income less than the per capita poverty threshold to the total number of families and individuals. Now, this is the first graph. So, this talks about poverty incidence. We have here... Blue, the blue bars that represent the population and red bars that represent the family. We have the years 2018 and 2021. As you can see, uh, in 2018, the population had a 16.7% poverty incidence 
and in 2021, it increased into 18.1%. It is an increase of 4.1%. 4 now, for families, in 2018, it was 12.1%, and 2021, it rose to 13.2%. An increase, an increase of 1.1%. Next graph, this is about the subsistence incidence. Now, uh, subsistence incidence, according to the PSA, this refers to the proportion of families or individuals with per capita income less than the per capita food threshold to the total number of families or individuals. Like the previous graph, we have purple bars that represent population, and dark blue bars that represent families. In 2018, for the population, it was 5.2% and increased to 5.9%. And then here, we have for families, 3.2% and increased to 3.9%. Both, both are increased of 0.7%. Now, these, these two slides, this one and the next slide after it, contain data of subsistence incidence and poverty incidence for families in Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao for both 2018 and 2021, represented by pink and green bars respectively. First, we have the data for the subsistence incidence in families for 2018 and 2021. In Luzon, the families there in 2018 had a 1.4% and in 2021 rose to 2.1%, an increase of 0.7%. In Visayas, it was 3.9% and increased to 6.1%. So there was an increase of 2.2% in subsistence incidence. As for Mindanao, in 2018, it was a whopping 8.1%. But then in 2021, it decreased to 6.9% meaning there was a decree, decrease of 1.2% of subsistence incidence. Now, now we have the data for the poverty incidence for families. We have the green, we have green bars that represent 2021 and pink bars that represent 2018. So like the previous graph here, we have Luzon, 6.6% poverty incidence. In 2021, it became 8.5%. So there was an increase of 1.9%. In Visayas, 15.2% in 2018, 18.9% in 2021, an increase of 3.7%. Now in Mindanao, it had 23.8% in 2018, but in 2021, it decreased to 20.5%, meaning there was a decrease of 3.3%. As you can, as you have seen from both data, and the poverty and subsistence incidence for families, it shows that Mindanao is doing well as the percentage just decreased a bit, while both Luzon and Visayas are steadily increasing as the years passed. So this means that Mindanao is slowly improving its quality of living, hence the decrease in the data. If this keeps up, not only for Mindanao, but also hopefully in Luzon and Visayas, the Philippines will have a better quality of living and better economic quality overall. And that ends my report on poverty in the Philippines for COM311 Intro to Graphics and Photojournalism under Engineer Sami Kayat, my professor. Once again, I am Julian Ono, a third-year mass communication student from North Sudumagete Main Campus. And thank you so much for listening to my report, everyone. Goodbye!